Hello, my name is Stefan N. Corey. I'm a visiting fellow at the International Consortium for Research in the Humanities, Fate, Freedom, and Prognostication, Strategies for Coping with the Future in East Asia and Europe at the Frederick Alexander University, Erlangen, Nuremberg. The object that I would like to introduce to you today is called a luopan in modern Chinese. That's luo, meaning net, gauze or retriculated, and pan meaning plate or dial. The low pan or retriculated plate is popularly known as a feng shui, geomantic, or topomantic compass. It is the primary tool used in the Chinese mantic art of feng shui, geomancy, or topomancy. A 1951 article by Wang Zhengduo lists 27 different terms used for magnetic compasses in China between the 12th and early 20th centuries. A few examples include luo jing pan, net warp plate, di luo, terrestrial snail whorl or spiral shell, zi wu pan, north-south plate, pan zhan, plate and needle, or luo jing, net mirror. We don't have time today to delve deeply into geomancy, but since the luo pan has been the primary tool of Chinese geomancers for over a thousand years, a brief introduction is in order. Joseph Needham and Wang Ling insightfully sum up the essence of geomancy in the following passage from vol volume four of their monumental Science and Civilization in China. Quote, the term geomancy has other meanings in other civilizations, but for the Chinese it meant the art of adapting the residences of the living and the tombs of the dead so as to cooperate and harmonize with the local currents of the cosmic breath. Known as the science of winds and waters, or feng shui, it did not mean merely the winds of everyday life, but rather the qi, or pneuma, of the earth circulating through the veins and vessels of the earthly macrocosm. The waters, too, were not only the visible streams and rivers, but also those passing to and fro out of sight, removing impurities, depositing minerals, and, like the qi, affecting for good or evil the houses and families of the living, as also the descendants of those who lay in the tombs. The history of the magnetic compass is only understandable in the context of this system of ideas, for this was the matrix in which it was generated." Unquote. I should also point out that there are two major schools of feng shui in China, the form school and the compass school. Neither is formally recognized before the Tang Dynasty, yet earlier geomantric traditions exhibit different degrees of emphasis on land forms and directionality. Michael John Patton's recent work, Five Classics of Feng Shui, convincingly outlines a general circular pattern in the historical evolution of feng shui from the observation of the land's form and force in the Han and early medieval periods to directionally based correlative analysis during the Tang and Song, and back to landforms and their animating forces during the Ming and Qing. Historically, the Luopan has been emphasized to a greater degree in the Compass School, but most feng shui practitioners today use a combination of landforms and directionality in their prognostications, and almost all of them use the feng shui compass. Needham and Wong point out that the attractive power of the lodestone was known in both China and the West from about the middle of the first millennium BCE. 
Its directive power, however, was understood in China much earlier than elsewhere. They contend that, quote, the original Chinese compass was probably the south controlling spoon carefully carved from lodestone and revolving on the smooth surface of a diviner's board. This original form was certainly known and used in the first century CE and may go back as a secret of court magicians to the second century BCE." Unquote. Needham and Wang go on to argue that the south-pointing lodestone spoon was superseded by the magnetized south-pointing iron fish or tadpole sometime between the 4th and 10th centuries of the Common Era. They date the transference of polarity from lodestone to needle for geomantic compasses to about the 5th century CE, pointing out that the magnetized needle might not have been widely used for nautical compasses in China before the 10th century. Even if this is true, navigational compasses are not attested outside of China but before the 12th century, at least a century later than the detailed descriptions found in early 11th century Song Dynasty texts. The Chinese Luopan or geomantic compass is a self-registering orienter, a mirror of space and time and a dynamic model of a locative cosmography. It unites divination by the heavens with divination by the earth. According to Derek Walters, the Luopan is, quote, a powerful talisman to ward off malignant spirits, a table of correspondences between various aspects of Chinese philosophy, and a compass to show the relationships of the 24 Chinese compass points." Unquote. The compass is a special device because unlike other related devices for measuring the macrocosm like sundials, astro-calendrical divination boards, or armillary spheres, it registers all on its own. The needle registers on a device that contains anywhere between two and many thousands of divisions. The Luopan we'll look at today, for example, has, without counting the compass, 2,180 divisions on its revolving dial. The instrument is brought to a site after an almanac is consulted to make sure that the day is suitable, and after the site is approached with the paces of you or some other preparatory rite, readings are carefully recorded using the different systems of representation on the dial. The directionality of a site, whether it is an already existing or planned site for the living or the dead, is then correlated with landforms, currents of qi, and the eight characters of the birth time of the person or persons associated with the site. Interpretation tends to feature balance and imbalance in yin and yang, as well as the active, passive, generation, and overcoming processes of the wuxing, or five phases. For a very crude example, if the site of a house is determined to be full of the water phase, and the residence's eight characters are full of the fire phase, the likelihood for disaster or harm is high, because water and fire are related in a negative manner. The former overcomes or conquers the latter. I'll return to the five phases or agents when we examine the rings on the dial of our Luopan. There are many different varieties of Luopan. Our example was designed in the early 1990s by Li Minda in Taiwan. It is the official device used by him and his many students of traditional Chinese geomancy and fate calculation at the Chinese Center for Research and Study of Illuminating Change in Taichung. Master Lin's Luopan has a south-pointing compass in its center with 18 concentric rings colored black and red with gold inscriptions. Like many Luopan, the moving black circular inner plate or dial is set within a stationary red square board. The board is 25 by 25 by 2 centimeters and the dial's diameter is 23 centimeters. Circle symbolizes heaven here, square symbolizes earth, red symbolizes yang, and yin is represented by the color black. There is also a red thread attached to the north side of the board, which is used to line up and determine exact measurements on the dial. Three major sections divide the 18 concentric rings on the dial. These three sections symbolize the three endowers of earth, human, and heaven. 
The first section, including rings one to five, belongs to the earth plate or standard needle plate. The second, including ring number six, belongs to the human plate, the middle needle plate, or the inner heaven plate. And the third major division on the face of the Luapan, which can be further divided into two sections, is divine, defined by the heaven plate, the seam needle plate, or the outer heaven plate, rings 7 to 18. So, there are at least three major sections or divisions on our Luapan and 18 rings. The center of the Luapan's dial contains a compass with a very thin needle mounted on a tiny pin in the center of a white plate. There is a thin red line and two red dots on the face of the compass used to line up the base or tail end of the needle. Let's look more closely at each of these rings as they emanate outward from the heavenly pool and south pointing needle in the center of the disc. Ring number one contains the eight trigrams, trigraphs, or three line images of the Zhou Yi, or Zhou Dynasty classic of changes. They are arranged in what is known as the former heaven or prior to heaven sequence. This sequence, numerologically represented in the He Tu, or Yellow River chart, is traditionally believed to have been revealed to the mythical figure Fu Xi on the body of a dragon horse that emerged from the waters of the Yellow River. The trigrams primarily act as indicators of the cardinal and ordinal directions, but all other associations, and there are many, are already at play. Any of them can be applied to the diviner's reading of a site. The Yellow River chart and Lower River diagram, along with images of mythical creatures accredited with revealing these images to mankind, are found everywhere. I've already briefly introduced the Yellow River chart the Luo River diagram, on the other hand, is traditionally said to have been revealed to Zhou King Wen on the shell of a turtle that emerged from the waters of the Luo River. The Luo River diagram is particularly significant because it depicts the numerology of the nine palaces or the magic square. Ring number two includes Roman numerals one to three and Chinese numbers for the nine palaces of the Luo River diagram there are 24 divisions and two layers of representation on the second ring, upper and lower. The lower layer is made up of different arrangements of Roman numerals one to three, one set of these numbers for each of the eight sections established by the trigrams in ring number one. The upper layer of numbers on ring number two of the Law Pond's dial represent the nine palaces or numbers of the magic square. The central number of each octant in ring number two perfectly reflects the numerology of the Luo River diagram. The number Wu, or five, is absent because it is the central number in the system. Ring number three is the earth plate. This is the primary set of directional markers on the Luopan. It contains 24 mountains or divisions which include the 12 earthly branches, eight of the ten heavenly stems, and four of the eight trigrams in the latter heaven sequence of trigrams. Qian, or heaven, is in the northwest. Kun, or earth, is in the southwest. Gun, or mountain, in the northeast. And Shun, or wind, in the southeast. Twelve of the twenty-four mountains are highlighted red, indicating yang. The black divisions indicate yin. So, we have already very briefly introduce something about the arrangement of the eight trigrams, but what about the heavenly stems and earthly branches? Well, both of these sets or systems, one of 10 and one of 12 characters, can be dated back to the second millennium BCE Shang Dynasty oracle bones. Both sets or systems are used as indicators of space and time. They are combined to create a sexagenary cycle that uses half of the possible combinations of the stems and branches. Both of these series have been connected to the development of plants. Rings number four and five depict the 72 penetrating mountain dragons and the 120 divisions of the phases of the standard needle. Ring number four includes 12 sets or blocks of five different combinations of the 10 heavenly stems, occupying 60 spaces. 
Each set of five is separated by one blank space corresponding to the eight earthly branches and the four trigrams of the earth plate's 24 mountains for a total of 12 blank spaces. Therefore, the total number of dragons, sometimes referred to as tigers on this ring, is 72. Each of the 60 stems is further correlated with one of the five phases or agents. According to Stefan Feuchtwang, the 72 positions can be correlated with the 72 five-day divisions of the year and can also be used to evaluate mountain formations and mark positions of the dragons and their chi. According to Needham and Wang, this ring is concerned with underground water courses, veins, and foundations. And, according to Derek Walters, these dragons are used for evaluating the auspiciousness of landforms. Ring number five includes 120 rather than 72 divisions. It represents the 120 divisions of the earth plate. It is comprised of 48 stem branch combinations, stem over branch, and 72 blank spaces for a total of 120 divisions. Only four of the 10 heavenly stems, Bing, Ding, Gung, and Xin, are used for the upper characters in the combinations. All 12 earthly branches are used for the bottom characters, corresponding to their 12 positions in the 24 mountains of the earth plate. According to Feuchtwang, the 72 blanks are generally inauspicious, while the 48 stem branch combinations are auspicious, in more auspicious than yang. This ring is used to interpret the general configuration rather than, than the contingent qi or pneumatic energy of a site. While I have already mentioned the five phases, a bit more should be said about how they operate because much of the interpretation that occurs when one examines the feng shui of a specific site boils down to how these five phases operate. The five phases are a kind of glue that binds together many of the, the many different systems of representation depicted on the Luopan's rings. The interesting thing about the five phases is that each phase is relatable to the other four according to four orders, active, passive, generation, and overcoming. For example, the phase water generates wood, active generation. Water overcomes fire, active overcoming. Water is generated by metal, passive generation. And water is overcome by soil, passive overcoming. Rings number six and seven are respectively known as the human and the heaven plates. Both rings reproduce the 24 mountains of the earth plate. The human plate is shifted counterclockwise seven and a half degrees west of north relative to the earth plate, and the heaven plate is shifted clockwise seven and a half degrees east of north. Thomas Aylward points out that unlike the earth plate, which indicates the static correlation to a direction in space, the human and heaven plates have a dynamic temporal application. He explains that the human plate in ring number six is associated with stellar asterisms and is used to select an appropriate time for connecting a residence to a dragon vein, the channel through which active, living, yang qi approaches a site. Ring number seven is the heaven plate. It is used in conjunction with waterways and landforms found at a particular site. It indicates the qi that exists from the point towards which a site is oriented. As with the human plate, the heaven plate or seam needle gives the geomancer information about the influence of time on a direction. Generally, the human plate in ring number six indicates chi that approaches from behind a site under consideration, while the heaven plate in ring number seven indicates chi or pneuma that departs through water and land in front of a site. Rings number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 focus on the 64 hexagrams, or six line images of the Zhou classic of changes. Ring number 8 assigns nine palace or magic square numbers to the lower trigrams in the former heaven sequence of the 64 hexagrams.
Ring number nine contains images of the bottom trigrams of all 64 hexagram and hexagrams, and ring number 10 contains images of the upper trigrams. Therefore, rings number nine and 10 collectively represent the 64 hexagrams found in the Zhou Yi, or Zhou Dynasty Book of Changes. 32 of the 64 hexagrams are highlighted red, indicating yang. The black hexagrams indicate yin. Ring number 11, just like ring number 8 did for the lower trigrams, uses the nine palace numbers for the upper trigrams of the 64 hexagrams. The numbers 1 through 4 and 6 through 9 in ring number 11 are assigned to each hexagram based on the magic square of the Lower River diagram. Ring number 12 records the Chinese names of the 64 hexagrams. Ring number 13 records Master Tsai's 60 earth penetrating dragons. This ring includes the 60 stem branch combinations of the sexagenary cycle for the 64 hexagrams with four combinations occupying two spaces each. This arrangement, tra traditionally attributed to Tsai Shan Yu, in the 12th century is used in conjunction with the previous five rings, all of which deal with the hexagrams of the changes. Rings number 14 to 17 deal with the 28 lunar mansions, a system of constellations or mansions which mark the path of the moon around the earth. Each of the lunar mansions represents a segment of the ecliptic through which the moon appears to move relative to the earth. Ring number 14 contains the names of 27 of the 28 lunar mansions, along with the number of degrees associated with each one. Ring number 15 contains the lineaments of the 28 lunar mansions as they were determined in the Kaishi rain period between 1205 and 1207 CE. It depicts the 360 equatorial divisions or degrees for the lunar mansions, which can be roughly correlated with the days in a year. Ring number 16 contains the inauspicious and auspicious positions for the sighting of tombs. Auspicious divisions in the heavenly circumference are indicated by triangles. Inauspicious divisions are indicated by X's, and neutral divisions are marked with circles. Ring number 17 includes the lineaments, divisions, or degrees of a 360-degree circle. Divisions start and end in the north and run from 0 to 360 degrees. The last ring, number 18, contains six cycles of the 64 hexagrams split into 384 divisions based on the lines of the changes. It includes 64 groups of six peaks arranged in the same order, short, tall, medium, medium, tall, short. Each of the 384 peaks is topped with a gold or black dot, gold for short peaks, and black for medium and tall. Each of the six peaks reflect the general significance of the six lines in a hexagram. The first and last short peaks are the least significant and are often ignored in interpretation. The tall middle peaks of each of the two trigrams are the most significant. This ring, as a whole, depicts 384 rather than the more standard 360 divisions of a solar year. It is the most finely divided ring of the Luapan and is used in conjunction with other rings of the heaven plate to help determine the temporality and directionality of qi approaching a site. To conclude, the 18 rings of the Luapan we have just examined are used to measure the, the conditions of a site. The measurements are then interpreted to prognosticate the auspiciousness and inauspiciousness of a site, particularly as it pertains to persons associated with it. The underlying concept is that the fate or mandated life trajectory of a person is fixed according to contingencies, like the position of an ancestor's grave or the layout of a house or business. Freedom, in the context of Chinese feng shui, geomancy, or topomancy, involves participation and belief in the truth of the art. In other words, if one buys into the truth of the systems of representation on the face of a luapan, one is free to situate themselves in the best possible position to live a long life.
attain help from ancestors, or succeed in business. From the perspective of a practitioner of feng shui, disbelief or an unwillingness to participate fully in the art robs one of the freedom to adjust fate for personal welfare or salvation. Not in the afterlife, but in this very world.